Hi, welcome to 304 Customs Garage. Today we're going to be working on a 6.0 offsite. This one has a crank no start. Uh, truck broke down after shifting into second gear. So we're going to scan it and we're going to check a couple things and hopefully get it back on the road. Okay, so to assess what's wrong with this truck, we're going to go ahead and use the scan gauge too. I pre-programmed some 6.0 codes into this from the website on scan gauge. So first we're going to go ahead and check for some codes. And then I'll show you the gauge function, which I have already checked previously. The batteries are starting to die on this truck, so we might not be able to um, show you an accurate number. But I already have it narrowed down to what it is before the batteries die. But I'll show you that anyway. So you go here, you check for codes. No codes found. And you'll go back home. And to assess what's maybe wrong with this one, you're going to go to gauge. I have these set on IPR percentage. Fickham main power, which should never go below 45 volts. Fickham sync, this will actually go to 1 when the truck cranks. And then we'll monitor the ICP as well. So we'll give it a try. Like I said, I already did this once before I videoed this clip. And I figured out where we need to start. And we'll jump to that after this. So we'll give it a try first. You see the FICA main power is low. IPR right there is your problem, I believe. It should not be 14.8% already. And the batteries are too dead, so we'll go ahead and jump to under the hood, and then we'll get back with you. So, this truck already has a new Fickham. It has had the dummy plugs and new standpipes that have the uh, little Teflon washer underneath the O-rings. It has the STC updated fitting. And Let's see, this has new nipple oil rails and new nipple cups for the top of the injectors has replaced the injectors already they're probably 60 70 thousand miles yeah 60 70 thousand miles on them and after some tests we determined that the upper yard percentage is where we'll start with this oh forgot to mention the icp sensor down here on the valve cover is also new um this truck broke down when this uh, individual was driving it so we'll go ahead and Replace the IPR. I did get a new one. We'll try that and we'll check the wire also to make sure that's not the problem. But before that, this truck ran fine. No issues. So hopefully we'll get that figured out and hopefully that'll be it. So there is an easier way to do this. You, if you can get your hand back there underneath the turbo, there is a socket that they make for this. But for this, I don't have that socket. So we're going to go ahead and pull this intake and turbo off, which is not very difficult either. And we'll also use a wrench to get that IPR valve out. And we'll go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's get started under the hood here. First, get this wire and harness out of the way. Bungee cord works fantastic for holding it up out of the way so you can get the turbo out. The next thing we'll do is grab a set of pliers and we'll pop these intercooler pipes off uh, 11 millimeter socket I'll show you in a second how we'll get them off really quick so what I'll do is go ahead and loosen this up dog barking in the background Flip the cord. just stuff that up in there for now after we uh, get these loose and then taking stuff off we'll go ahead and change that out so 11 millimeter loosen that one and then there you're going to loosen the one closest to the intercooler to take this off
a little difficult to reach at times, but we'll get it off here. Make sure you don't lose those clamps. I remember from doing this previously, I think they are pretty pricey. Go ahead and take that off. Watch our hose so we don't cool it down on the motor. And then we'll go ahead and pull this pipe out. All right, next, we're gonna take uh, aftermarket intake. We're gonna go ahead and take that off, this piece here. And the clamps on here are eight millimeter. So we'll go ahead and move to that next. All right, so we got the clamps loose. Go ahead and pry that away from the turbo and the intake as well. May have to pull it off here for a can't remember. Nope. So we'll go ahead and pull that off, set that up out of the way. Now we got our turbo. So first we will start with loosening the turbo bolts. And those are 10 millimeter, I believe. So we'll start there. Grab a ratchet, we'll be right back. Okay, so 6.0 turbo bolts on an 04 to 07. You have three. You have one there, close to where the up pipe connects to the turbo. I have one here on this side, here, somewhere, right there. And then there's also one, I don't know if you can see that or not. There's one underneath the down pipe as well that goes straight down. That one's a little difficult to reach at times, but I'll show you how we'll get to that one when we get there. So we'll go ahead and take these out and then we'll be so, right back. To get this last bolt for the turbo behind, um, I guess the down pipe and the up pipe here that connects to the turbo, we're gonna go ahead and loosen the exhaust clamp on this side. And then I'm actually gonna put a ratchet. You're gonna reach around between the Ficum and the up pipe with a short socket a 3H drive, 10 millimeter. And you can reach from there, bust it loose. And then when you move the down pipe out far enough, you can actually turn it by hand if it isn't too rusted. So we'll go ahead and get that out. We'll take the oil feed out and then we will pull the turbo. So let's get to that. And then we'll be back when we get the turbo out. All right, got the down pipe loose. We got all three turbo bolts out. One thing left to do is the up pipe. Sometimes that is a real pain to get back on, but I hope that this won't be that bad. None of the other bolts seem to be too overly rusted. Make sure you unplug your VGT sensor. And there's a clip there that needs to come off. And I may have said eight millimeter. I can't remember before I checked the video before I post this up, but it's actually 10 millimeter to remove the oil feed. So we'll get that off and we'll pull the turbo and then we'll get into the IPR. We're finally down to the IPR valve here. That'll be your valve back here in the back. It has a little heat shield around this one. Um, like I said, this is a way to get to this. It's a little more work than if you had to socket, I'm sure. But to me, it's easier just to pull the turbo because then you don't have to worry about trying to squeak your hand, arm and hand in around behind the turbo and the thickum. So we'll go ahead and take the heat shield off. We'll check the wiring too, because since it is so close to the up pipe, maybe it got heated and ruined it somehow. And then we'll bust it loose, take it out, inspect it, make sure the screen's still on the end of it, O-ring, and we'll put the other one in and hopefully it'll start. So let me go grab a wrench and we'll get started on this. All right, we got the plug out. Took the heat shield off that and set the plug aside. It looked fine. It did not see any signs of it being burn up or anything. So we'll bust this loose and then we'll go ahead and check that out on the screen and we'll put the new one in. I used the Crescent wrench, 10 inch, nothing too special. I don't know what size it would actually be. So I'll just screw it out.
All right, there it is. I don't, I said, I don't know. It's like little stuff inside. I'm sure there's some kind of check valve or something in there, maybe. But we'll go ahead and put the new one in and see if that works. If not, at least the screen and O-rings are still on it. We'll have to fish those out. Oh, I'll be right back after I get the new one. Here's the new IPR valve. This is Motorcraft. I would recommend also getting Motorcraft if you happen to come across this and have to replace this yourself. There is the part number for anyone that's interested. See, comes with this new O-ring and screen. The only thing that I noticed differently about this one is the O-ring seated towards the bottom. Uh, like I said, I don't know if that's irrelevant or not. So we'll go ahead and put this in, get this stuff back together, and we'll try to start the truck. Uh, so, we got the new IPR valve in. This is almost as tight as I can turn it by hand. The Ford spec on this, I believe, is around 37 to 38 foot-pounds. However, what I'm going to do, since I cannot turn it anymore, it's all the way up against the high-pressure oil pump there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it until it reaches the factory location and it's tight. Now, 37, 38 foot-pounds is not that much, so I would have assumed that's pretty close to where it needs to be. And then we'll get it plugged back up and start the reassembly process. And we'll be right back. So we didn't get to test the truck tonight. The batteries are too dead. We didn't get the IPR valve and all the stuff back on. Um, just again, for codes with the little battery life that we did have and it didn't show anything still. Of course, we didn't get to crank it again, so maybe that's why. But we did hopefully show you how to change the IPR valve with just a wrench and removing the turbo. It doesn't take that long. Maybe it took an hour and a half. Hopefully they'll get the truck started tomorrow, but I believe that was the issue uh, based on the diagnostic readings that we're getting on the scan gauge. I'd recommend investing in one of those if you do own a 6.0 or if you have the money you could buy some kind of Ford software that they have. I know they have stuff out available, but if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check out one of these other videos here. Um, I have another 6.0 video that I replaced some oil rail nipple o-rings and uh, injector cups and that's gonna wrap things up for tonight thank you for watching